Kenton, and I want to share the strategy I use to price my apartment rentals each year. I will also elaborate with some of my thoughts on renewals and other insights I've learned over the years throughout the video. Let's start with an often repeated rule of thumb, the 1% rule. The way you use the 1% rule is your rent needs to be at least 1% of the property value. So if the home or an apartment treated as a condo is valued at 120,000, then you'd charge at least 1200 per month. I would caution you that in my opinion, this rule and other similar ones are way too generic. And personally, I wouldn't use it for any decisions. Nothing beats doing actual research in your market. And I'm going to explain some of the ways I recommend you do that research. First, we'll start with two websites to get a quick location specific rental range. Start by going to rentometer.com and Zillow price my rental and simply enter in your address. For Rentometer, you'll need to also enter beds, baths, and guess the rental rate so they can compare to it. Zillow will give you a rental rate and a range, while Rentometer will give you an average, the median, the 25% and 75th percentile. From here, you really need to know your market and how your apartment compares to the local market. First, how do your finishes compare to the market? The higher end finishes will push your rental toward the higher end. Second, how does your square footage compare to the market? Obviously, a larger than average unit will push your rental toward the higher end. Third, how does your layout compare to the market? An open floor plan with an island opening up to the living space is going to push your rental toward the higher end as opposed to a more closed off layout. Fourth, how do your unit amenities compare to the market? Having a washer, dryer, dishwasher, central heat, and AC are all more desirable and will push your rental toward the higher end. Fifth, how do your building's amenities compare to the market? A nice outdoor space, bike room, pool, or similar will obviously raise the rental value compared to other properties. Again, you need to know your market to be able to make an informed judgment on the value of these rental attributes in your area. So if you don't know it very well, you'll need to get more information. For the next step, we'll go back to Zillow and Rentometer. You should have seen some surrounding comps when you priced your rental with Zillow and Rentometer. The problem with those and other rental websites is they only show available properties, not what the apartment actually rented at, but it should still give you an idea of what other comparable properties are asking. For a more detailed report, you can sign up for the pay version of Rentometer and you'll get a full detailed rental report. I have a link to Rentometer in the description below. Rentometer will give you a few free searches every 30 days or so per your IP address. Then you'll need to pay. The pay version will give you unlimited searches plus a set number of really nice and detailed rental reports depending on the package you signed up for. Personally, I prefer Rentometer over Zillow, but that may change over time as Zillow seems to be constantly innovating. Although I haven't used it, I've been told that Avail charges $20 for a rent analysis, but the data comes from RentRange, so you can go directly there and get the same report for less money. I believe RentRange is comparable to Rentometer as far as results, but Rentometer does run sales often and when it does, it is definitely less expensive than rent range. Personally, I have only paid for rent meter reports. If you have your real estate license or have a realtor who could do a search of recently rented apartments in your area on the MLS, that would also give you some real actual rented prices for apartments in your area. Of course, we may not all have that option. The next best option is to ask one or more realtors for their opinion on the rental price for your unit and what they think you can ultimately get. They should base their opinion on relevant recent comps and share them with you. Be aware that they will be hoping to get a listing, so keep that in mind when meeting with these agents. If you have no intent on using them to help you with your listing, you should be upfront with them about it. They will appreciate it and hopefully you can build a relationship with that agent 
for future purchases, flips, or if you need an agent to help you with a hard to rent unit. Another way to learn your market is to physically go to rental open houses or schedule a tour of similar apartments to see how your apartment compares to the others in the area. If you enjoy networking, you may want to join a local landlord group where you can speak with other landlords to compare rents, share tips, and other local information. Here are some general rules that I have learned over the years with the Chicago multifamily properties that I own. Basement units rent for approximately 10 to 15% less than the first floor unit, assuming they are fairly similar in terms of size and finishes. When I compare the first through fourth floor apartments, the rents usually go up only about a half to 1% per floor as you go up. For renewals, I recommend doing the same price analysis each year. Even if the rents haven't moved much, I would recommend at least a nominal increase in rent. A half to 1% increase is rarely enough to push a tenant to move, and it is unlikely that your property taxes, insurance, utilities, maintenance, and other expenses didn't go up at least that much in the last year. So if you aren't raising rents, you are slowly reducing your net income each year. An added benefit is that it sets the precedent that you will be raising rents to keep up with the economy and the tenant won't be shocked when you ask for a rent increase if you haven't been doing it every year. In the end, you'll just have to use the data to come up with a price for your unit and go with it. If you rent it right away, don't second guess it. You did the research, so feel confident that you did a great job and you can raise the rent next year. If you are not getting a lot of the traffic though, then you'll need to drop the price. If you're doing a decent number of showings, but no one's applying, then you'll also just need to drop the price. You may think you can get more because you love your unit and you think it's great, but the market will dictate what you can actually get. Don't be stubborn or have an ego about the rental rate. Remember, it's a business. If the unit isn't rented, you're losing money. Keep in mind, one month of vacancy is equal to dropping your rent 8.3% and getting it rented. You can usually drop it less than 8.3% and have it filled, so you'll be money ahead, even if you think you should get more. Personally, I have found that it takes me longer to rent vacant units than units with a tenant in place. I acknowledge that I have formed this opinion based on a small sample size, but it seems to continue happening each time I renovate a unit. I think it looks great, but it sits, and then I drop the price, but then the next year, it's easy to get more than I was originally asking the year prior, even when the market hasn't moved enough to account for the increase. I don't stage my vacant units, so that may be part of the issue, but it is just an observation I've made over the years. Hopefully, some combination of the above ideas will give you some insight into how you should price your apartments. Remember, research will always be better than any rules of thumb, and please check out Rent-A-Meter through the link below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. If you know of any additional resources or methods that I missed, please share them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I wish you the best of luck with all your rental listings. Thank <music> you.